Welcome Star Wars Force Arena players to this brand new update video. So yesterday I posted a video about saying where is 3.5, what's going on? I wanted to say 3.2 but I was really hoping 3.5 would have been the thing we, we got with some major improvements to the game. This is just an update with some tweaks, nothing major. It is disappointing to some extent, depends on your point of view I suppose. But we're getting four new cards, we're getting a brand new in-game event we're also getting some changes to the data cards uh, and some of the traditional packs on the shop are being removed. One thing you'll notice is that we're getting no Kira or Lando in this update or Beckett for example and I think one of the main reasons behind that is because of probably because of EA and the licensing re agreement they have with, with Disney right now because bearing in mind EA probably have first pick for everything as they have a 10 year license to publish Star Wars games, unfortunately, on um, the main platforms. And as we all know, they're not, they're not doing a very good job of that either. Um, but they obviously, with the Galaxy of Heroes mobile game, they've thrown a bunch of solid content into that. So they obviously have first, first pick. And there's probably a time limit on when other companies like Netmarble and Zynga now, Zynga, 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 can use uh, characters from, from that time period. But don't be too frustrated, maybe they're coming soon. TM. Interesting. Let's jump in. So what have we got here? We've got Elf's Nest coming with unique card Weasel and then for the Empire we've got Moloch with uh, his unique card Rebolt and Sky. All unlocked at tier 10 and bear in mind if you um, haven't, if you've gone past tier 10 you can't go back to tier 9 to go back up to tier 10 to get the cards. It doesn't work that way. You just have to get them some other way either from a shop or from in-game events or if you save up your um, packs, or if you haven't unlocked your guild reward, not guild reward, your um, end of season reward pack yet, you could try and maybe wait till tomorrow and then open it when the update goes live. There's always a chance you get a new card in there. I do that quite a lot sometimes, to be honest, and it, and it kind of works. So, here we go. Evans Nest, Evans Nest, Evans Nest. Attack power 76, 1 129 DPS, 1293 health. Pause the video. To check out all these stats and things and obviously the backstory attack speed 0.59 seconds melee unit movement speed 2.8 um which is slow now snoke moves at 2.9 so that's pretty um pretty slow um but snoke's 2.9 and it's 2.8 so mm, fraction fraction in it but we'll see how that plays out when the update goes live uh leader's skill at shield gauntlet activates a shield gauntlet after not attacking for two seconds to decrease damage received by 40%. And then the kinetic charge strikes the ground with the kinetic charge on the end of Electro Ripper Staff to deal 300% of AoE damage and stuns for two seconds. I had to pause there, I was going to sneeze and I did. Cooldown is 40 seconds on that. Be interesting to see how and if perk points or perks make any impact on those numbers and then again there you go that's your background of the character if you haven't seen solo that tells you about it um, and, and things so pause the video there moving on to the unique card cost of three energy we've got weasel with attack power 296 dps 148 health 593 movement speed 2 area um, attack range is 8 attacks everything and the attack speed is just 2 um, Again, got a spiel there about the background and stuff. Uses a special launcher that fires a hook. He tows away enemy leaders and eliminates multiple enemies at once with an exploding rocket. So it'd be interesting to see how that does. Attacks enemies from a long distance, long distance, which is eight range, using a special rocket. It's about the same range as a sniper, give or take, your point five. Launches an exploding rocket that can deal damage to a large number of enemies. Fires a hook to pull back fleeing enemy leaders in order to finish him off. That'll be quite interesting to see. Especially the characters who are quite rapid and trying to get away like Baze, for example, and those who just managed to escape. Grievous is another one that springs to mind in 2v2 if you're thinking about stuff like that. So that's him. Moving on to the Galactic Empire. We've got Moloch. Moloch. Attack power 71, DPS 79, health 892. Carillion Hounds start at level 1. Movement speed is 2, so it's not too bad. Um, attack range is 6.5. Interesting skill this one. Hound Trainer deploys up to three Carillion Hounds every eight seconds. 
deploying Rebel and Sky increases Krillin Hound's deployment speed by 80% for 7 seconds. So I imagine they would work like Sisters Droids do, Seven Sisters Droids. However, Seven Sisters Droids the only attack when you press the button, her skill. By the sounds of this, they'll actually attack, they'll just spawn and just go and attack things that are nearby. Um, and then also you've got a focused attack. Corillian Hounds on the battlefield to focus attack a target. If target is organic unit or leader, inflicts 1% bleed damage per, uh, per second for 3 seconds and decreases movement speed by 30%. With a 30, 13 second cooldown on that, so that's interesting. So you can like like with Hux, you can focus on something, a target or a turret, and I'll just attack that. That'll be interesting to see. Have it do that, uh, and also if you deploy these two guys on the battlefield, they come as a pair. Um, that will increase the um, the time and stuff. Give you like a bonus to how many hounds you can spawn in in a given amount of time. So cost of energy of two, attack power one two five, DPS one three one, health four five six, attack speed zero point nine six seconds, melee unit two point two movement speed, and targets everything, um, which is interesting. And again, there's a spiel there for those guys. Um, attack the nearest enemy with a club, allows Moloch to summon Corellian Hounds more often. Unlocked at tier ten as well, uh, and that tells you about these guys here. So interesting now this is where the game um, goes into some big changes and it's all around data cards personally i don't give a monkey's backside about data cards i think they are just an awful addition to the game and weren't needed but they're here um, so improvements have been made so that using error set bonuses are easier and the cost of unequipping data cards has been reduced I never really un unequip them, I just re re replace it with another one. That's what I do. Uh, when you unequip a data card, credits will be used instead of crystals. Before the update, you used to have to use 100 crystals. Now it'll be 2,500 credits, which is why I never did it. And no doubt many of you didn't either. Change data card unlock conditions. The required quantity and level of legendary unique cards have now been lowered to make it easier for squad leaders to unlock data card slots. And the reason for this, this is now obviously clearly the whales have all maxed out at the top um, and we're all left behind because we cannot compete as free to play players and this is why the changes have been brought in is it a welcome change of course it is but considering how these cards are just you know ridiculously stupid um it, it doesn't bother me here or there it just makes it a bit easier now for a lot of us to um to, to get cards and then obviously level up and unlock the next set bonus uh, because right now obviously all the locks and stuff are all based around how high your leaders are and your unique cards the whole idea of this was to make you spend credits make you get your foil packs make you purchase leaders this is the whole idea behind the data cards this was the concept in 3.0 that's the only reason why it came to the game in my opinion next one up reduce data card grade upgrade upgrade up cost I can't just call it upgrade never mind the amount of credits needed to grade up a data card has been lowered as you can see there um, doesn't say how much, it just says generally it's lowered. And it can cost quite a lot of credits if you're great if you're leveling up these cards, especially if, especially if on the right hand side where you're using a lot of cards and depends on the level, that cost could be almost 10, 15,000 credits. And bear in mind how credits are like really rare in the game, people just don't spend the money on it to do it. Improved data card grade up notice. The grade up rate is at max. Thank you very much for letting me know. I appreciate it. Notification here as well. Also, when the inventory is full, it tells you about that too. Um, big deal. Data card quest improvements. The data card quest has been improved in this update. One, change the data card deduction rules. The number of attempts will no longer be deducted if you fail in a data card quest. So, if it's going a bit Pete Tong for you, just lose. I mean, you can go back in and play again. Because currently, right now, if you play two games, which is your max, you lose one and you win one, it'll then cost you 100 crystals to play the next one. And you have to wait till tomorrow. Two, change data card quest additional play count. Users can now charge a play count a certain number of times without having to consume crystals every time you enter. The number of entries on a single player count charge will be the same as a number of free entries. Let's see how that plays out tomorrow. Card deconstruction improvements. So they put it on the main menu now because people obviously aren't doing this, and, and, and um, Netmarble obviously believe that. 
it's too hidden away the perks which is nonsense because people just aren't interested in it quite honestly um improvements have been made to the deck editing screen to make it easy to make it card disassembling easier uh so it's on the home screen there as so you can see click the little plus button and it takes you to where you can exchange cards for perk points um and it just tells you about all that there tap the button there blah 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 go to this screen other improvements have also been made to so that event coins will convert into credits immediately after the receipt once the coin event has ended the amount of event coins received will be reflected in your credits rather than having to wait for it to be posted i saw it on the death star so casting my back a little while ago we had poe dameron's attack on the death star uh, on um star killer base this is now using the millennium falcon to attack the Death Star 2. Same event, um, lots of things in there. So it's worth doing because there's lots of freebies in there and it resets every 24 hours. And you get move movement speeds, you go in the outer circle, then you have to go where it says start, you need to land on that again. Then you go into the middle ring and you go around again. You need to click on the attack run and then you attack the Death Star uh, and hopefully you get a jackpot. Whatever that be, I doesn't, it doesn't say. It could be crystals, it could be, that be crystals, it could probably be credits or maybe even a wild card, who knows. Um, and obviously in the week, if you have an attack count, if you manage to do one run, you get perk points. Two run, three runs, you get a wild card unique. Five times, you get one of those wild cards. And then if you manage to do seven, you get a useless perk token for three, level three. That is so generous. It's interesting how the level three perk token is more valuable than a wild card. Figure that one out. And then this is what's interesting at the end now. Um, end of cell for some packages. So the level up package cell ends. So the dark side and light side level up package, training level up packages are all being removed from the store tomorrow in the update or tonight, depends on your time zone, obviously. Um, the tier achievement exclusive item pack cell ends. They're going as well. And the starter pack cells are going as well. Um, and there's no replacements. There's no talk of what's replacing them, if anything. Um, and that's it so bear in mind if you've already got one of those if you have purchased those um, the crystal packs level up packs if you haven't reached that particular level yet to get those crystals don't panic they will be delivered to you in your inbox you will actually be awarded all the outstanding crystals um, in your inbox when the update goes live but those packages are being removed which is a bizarre play um, and it makes me think you know are they you know are they going to replace with something else who knows um because they weren't good value for money let's face it and when you dinged up a level at low level it was the first thing that you saw buy our pack buy our pack yeah okay but there you go that is our update that is it there's nothing else being done to matchmaking nothing being done to 2v2 no balancing leaders the bugs are still there for we've got for Darth more running around and some other bugs in the game that is it let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you in the next star wars force arena video may the force be with you